Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining Great Learning's AI Masterclass today on a lazy Sunday evening. Uh, to introduce myself, uh, my name is Gautam, and I work with Great Learning, looking into our various professional upskilling programs, helping professionals like you upskill and make career transitions into some of the new age tech careers like AI, cloud computing, cyber security, etc. Uh, now, coming to today's agenda, all of us at one point of time or another have heard these terms AI, machine learning, deep learning, etc. Uh, we started getting curious about it, felt it as more of a movie fiction like Terminator or etc. And now are accepting the reality that it is mainstream and it is already being implemented. As most of you are aware, today's session is going to be a live to our masterclass where one of our great learning syndrome faculty, Dr. Sunil Kumar, is going to be you know, focused on one of the most popular and widely implemented AI and applications called recommendation systems. We would start with providing an overview on recommendation systems some of the popular use cases and implementation, what are the different types of recommendation systems, and in the process, build a movie recommendation system similar to Netflix. On a funny note, I am pleased that all of you chose to dedicate the next two hours in learning something new and interesting instead of binge watching the next TV series or watching Big Boss. Okay, uh, let's start today's session by quick, giving a quick introduction about today's speaker, Dr. Dr. Sunil Kumar Chinnamgari. Uh, as his LinkedIn bio reads, Dr. Sunil has been a researcher, speaker, he's also authored a few books uh, with an overall experience of more than 15 years in the field of analytics and data science. He's, he's, uh, he's completed his PhD in Bhartia University in the domain of applied machine learning, NLP, big data and text analytics. He's also, his professional experience uh, spans across companies like FICO, APG, Mu Sigma, Fidelity, and recently he is currently working as GM Engineering Innovation at Musk. Being an AI evangelist, Dr. Sunil frequently engages with great learning as a faculty, sharing his knowledge and experiences with our audiences and also students. Uh, on that note, I would like to pass the buck to Dr. Sunil and start with today's session, which all of you have been eagerly waiting for. Thank you. Hey, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm not sure where you're joining from, so I'm kind of greeting you in all the possible ways that I could. Uh, I've joined today's meeting from uh, Denmark, um, Copenhagen, um, so it's it's quite a bright morning here. Um, so I'm so glad I'm able to share my views with you this morning, and uh, we're going to talk about recommended systems in detail. Um, Gautam, I might need your help here. So I'm going to share my screen. So uh, just, yeah, super. So I hope everybody's able to see my screen now. So this is the brief agenda. Um, so thank you for the great introduction, Gautam. So I hope uh, this session is going to be useful for myself as well as all the participants that are out there. Um, so it's a productive two hours which we're going to spend learning about recommender systems. Um, so we're going to be talking uh, about recommender systems in general, and uh, we're also going to be talking about, uh, you know, what are the historical trends and who developed this and why they developed it. And uh, most of us, as beginners, we kind of shy away from uh, getting into ML and AI areas because we have phobia of Python. Um, I would also like to show a little bit of uh, Python here. That way uh, we get to learn how easy it is to implement things in Python. And as long as you are able to code it in one of the, uh, uh, you are, you're a coder and you're at least familiar with a little bit of code, um, so Python is like a cakewalk and I hope um, you'll be able to, uh, you know, get yourself convinced that it's not that big as long as you know the topics and the theory behind each of the uh, algorithms, uh, then coding is like super duper easy. And most of the times there is also Google and there's also Stack Overflow for you to look at and get help from. Um, these are all the various uh, sources that will help you to run with the code, even if you're not an expert coder as such. Um, so we will start with recommender systems. So I would um, I would rather start with a funny thing that I've observed on uh, um, Facebook. I'm part of one of the groups called uh, Deep Learning Memes. And one of these uh, uh, memes that I've seen recently about uh, uh, recommender systems is a person goes to an online e-commerce shop and he tries to buy a... <laughs> Uh, by a stool and the recommendations that came up to him are a fan and a rope. So basically it is suggesting that the person should uh, hang himself. And another 
uh, funny comment is uh, recently uh, a person logged on to linkedin and uh, he uh, he was actually shown all the jobs uh, from the same company that he's working in um, so he said uh, he pointed out that you know your recommender system is great it is actually looking at my skills and suggesting what kind of jobs i should be applying for however you need to improve your recommender system um you know with some logic that scans if i'm currently working in the same company as uh, uh you know what jobs you're suggesting me to apply for um yes these are great suggestions um these are some improvements as well um so most of us we also think that uh, recommender systems when it comes to the application of it uh, it is mostly applicable for movies and music recommendation um, you know sites like amazon prime and sites like netflix sites like uh, um, you know big box and uh, sites like uh, youtube use it uh, but the applications of recommender systems really go beyond these areas um so i have seen people using it in text analytics people used in uh, use this in cyber security and people use this in preventive maintenance in manufacturing um so people even use it i have seen a couple of patents um, that have come across where um people have used a recommender system in order to understand what are the parts that they need to procure uh in a manufacturing firm so you know so there are multiple applications and as long as you know the algorithms in detail um, you know it's it's kind of super duper easy to implement them according to the use cases that you have um so let me set the context for this today's session we're going to briefly be talking about uh, what recommender systems are and who all contributed to this area and obviously uh, it's it's always good to memorize the history and understand uh, where we were and uh, what is the current state of art today and uh, we are also going to be talking about the broad techniques that are available uh, you know there are seven eight different techniques that are available today and we're going to be talking about that and uh, probably we'll pick up one or two easier recommender systems and uh, we'll try to implement them in python um, so it's so it's the time that is limited otherwise uh, when i'm in great learning i do the course on recommender systems for uh, the ai ml students and it runs up to uh it runs up to 8 to 9 hours class where we specialize ourselves in recommender system and learn everything anything available on recommender systems uh but be because this is an introductory class i won't be talking about uh in depth aspects of recommender systems but just to give you a hint of how easy it is to learn the systems and though it sounds like like too much of geeky stuff uh, it is actually not it's more of common sense and that's the idea that i wanted to imbibe through this session <clears throat> so from a questions perspective i don't want to definitely make this a monotonous lecture rather um, i encourage this to be a very interactive session as such um, gautam uh, are you are you are you looking at the chat on youtube or how how does it look like are there any questions or how many people join uh, would you be able to help me out with that statistic <laughs> uh Sure, Sunil. Uh, as of now, uh, I think there's not much of questions. Uh, I think we can start start the session right now. Okay, super. So, recommend the systems. Basically, um, we have very limited time, so nobody has so much time as such. Um, you know, people are very busy with their lives and too many things out there. Um, so, how do I go about? Um, you know uh, using my time the best and that is where recommender systems comes into play um so um so recommender systems will help you uh, basically to span your time across uh, you know the things that you care about uh, the things that you basically um, you know are interested in how do i um, how do i basically serve the content that is interesting to you so that is what recommender system uh, does so this particular uh, ai based uh, set of algorithms basically scans through all the available options and personalizes the choices that are of interest to you according to your profile according to the historical uh, browsing patterns according to what other people are watching according to your preferences and how likely you are to watch them 
um, by doing some kind of predictions and some some kind of heuristics on the data, it is going to help you to um, kind of uh, um, you know sh uh, showcase the aspects that interest you. Um, the idea is basically to ensure that um, you know you are watching the content or you are interested in the aspects that are personalized only for you, right? This is not new, right? So uh, even when systems did not exist, um, even when people, um, you know, did not have the e-commerce world out there, uh, when you used to walk into a particular shop and uh, when you used to buy a shirt, uh, people used to recommend, uh, sir, you bought a shirt and this particular pants really go well with this particular shirt, right? And this is a recommendation that the shopkeeper is providing. Think of it, why he is doing it, right? He is actually doing it because he wants to uh, upsell or cross-sell things. That way he maximizes his profit. And that's exactly the methodology here as well. Uh, in e-commerce world also, either I wanted to upsell stuff where I make more profit or I would want to recommend things. Uh, so I earn your loyalty and you stay here on my site for a longer time. That way, um, you know, the propensity of sales will get increased. So, and over and above, we are overwhelmed with information. There's no death, dearth of information today. There are lots and lots of books, lots and lots of music tracks available. And it's, it's um, you know, it's a very uneasy situation if I were not providing customized recommendations, recommendations, recommendations as such. And there are also ads on which I am incurring uh, a lot of money. Uh, and my marketing budgets are only limited. Therefore, I wanted to be able to showcase the advertisements only to the people that have propensity to respond to my ad. And I wanted to have the maximum bang for my buck. And those are the use cases where I would use recommender systems uh, in order to curate interest in you. And then when I personalize the content, I am actually increasing the probability of you actually coming on to my site and engaging with me further, right? So um, so if, if there is an eight year old man and I show uh, all the lipsticks and uh, all the um, makeup items, probably he would be not interested in those kind of items and it's just waste of marketing material as, as such. Right, so the budgets are super limited. So I wanted to make, make sure that I get the maximum bang for the buck, right? So, and uh, um, long tail phenomena, again, we have lots and lots of niche products uh, on which probably I might be making a best benefits uh, or as a company. So I wanted to be focusing my ideas on that. And I wanted to showcase those things to you as and when uh, I see that you are a user that falls into that bucket. Um, so obviously, I need to uh, I need I need to uh, prioritize the items that I make the maximum cut on. So um, so and why recommender systems? Obviously, um, I I know you. I profiled you, and I looked at your interests, and I look I I kind of certainly understand the patterns that you are most interested in. Um, when I know that, why not I shortlist the products that you will be interested in? So it's a mutual win-win. And uh, that's the reason, uh, you know, I uh, recommendation systems are uh, pretty much a hit today in the world, right? And uh, what can be recommended? There are lots and lots of things, right? So I have seen on certain news um, paper websites in India. So I am a Telugu speaker and I generally go to uh, a website called enadu.net. And uh, I, what I see there is, uh, okay, these are the these are the news items that were really read by most number of people that have come to the site today, and this helps me to understand, um, you know, what are those items that I need to be focusing on, um, rather than even having to go through all the items that are there listed out on that uh, newspaper website, and um, you know, you won't be surprised. Um, so one of my friends wanted to get married and he went to jeevansati.com and he clicked on a profile um, and he got some more profiles recommended to him saying, you know, these people also look very similar to the profile you search for, right? So uh, he has more options now to pick up. I'm, I'm sorry, this, this might be really a naughty example, but this really happened. And uh, you go to nowcree.com or uh, you go to LinkedIn 
uh, you obviously see jobs that match your profile <laughs> and it's not random jobs that are thrown at you these are jobs that fit into your profile and uh, these are these are jobs that actually match your resume as such and similarly if you've gone ahead and purchased a uh, certain language um, um uh, language movie tickets and next time you get into uh, book my show uh, very similar language movies or very similar genre movies get recommended to you and even in uh, social networks like facebook um, you are recommended friends okay so these are the friends that you may pro probably wanted to look at right on coursera i'm pretty sure most of you are all ai ml enthusiasts and you are doing some courses on Coursera and Udemy and all those kind of sites, right? So when you log in, um, they actually profile you based on the courses that you're picking up and they're recommending very similar courses to you, right? So all these are various examples um, where um, you are basically, um, you know, interacting with recommended systems even, when, even without you knowing uh, how it is done, right? So. All right, so let's really quickly get into who all contributed to the real world uh, recommender system algorithms, who developed it. So there is a company called Group Lens. Um, these are the ones that actually open sourced a lot of data sets. And a couple of data sets that we will be looking at today is Movie Lens data set and Book Lens data set. Uh, we'll be focusing more on the Movie Lens data set because it's easy to relate. Mm, so Movie Lens data set is uh, curated data set. Um, it, it basically has a list of movies and uh, a list of items that, I mean, li uh, list of users that have uh, given star ratings for those movies. Um, so initial recommender systems using collaborative filtering approach. Collaborative filtering is one of the approaches. We're going to be looking at collaborative systems today, uh, collaborative filtering uh, recommender system today. Uh, at least one form of the recommender system, I'll touch upon it. Um, and it's a very easy topic, though the name sounds complicated. I'll be talking about it. So these are the uh, group lens are the people that actually help to basically build collaborative systems. Um, Amazon, we know that. Um, they are pretty much really the users of recommender system algorithms. Uh, you know, when I learned recommender systems in my PhD class, uh, I was told, okay, you see Amazon, they are the ones who are pioneering a lot and lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, recommender system algorithms on their site. So it's that famous they are. Um, so, and then Netflix, um, they have developed a kind of algorithm called uh, matrix factorization based uh, recommended system, otherwise called as latent factor based recommended system. Uh, it's a little mathematical concept um, that is based on another mathematical concept called as singular value decomposition. Um, so we're not going to be getting into the details of it because it's, uh, it's out of scope for this particular introductory session, but I know I generally cover it for at least two hours in my normal great learnings class. And uh, you know, YouTube, um, so they use uh, deep learning based as well as, uh, you know, hybrid recommended systems. And, uh, you know, even Facebook, for example, you, you know, chooses to um, show you saying, I think these are your friends, go ahead and add them, right? So that is social networking based uh, recommended system, right? So these are certain companies which are using it. Uh, without further delay, let's get into our first recommender system, uh, which is popularity based recommender system. But before that, let me take a pause here and ask if Gautam has got any questions so far. Mm. Yes, uh, uh, yes, we have a few questions. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so, one of the questions by Sandesh is uh, were data production loss obstructing any recommendation system, if any, or does it matter at all? Um, GDPR, uh, data protection loss, yes, it's definitely, mm, um, it's definitely uh, something to think about, uh, but this comes under the ethical area of uh, implementing AI. Uh, I can give you a use case. Uh, there's, a, one, there's one big uh, store in, uh, you know, US. Um, so one of this college going girls and went ahead and purchased the products um, that people generally buy during pregnancy. Uh, however, this girl did not reveal that she's pregnant to her family. But what happened was this particular store uh, started sending products uh, and, and discounts to this particular individual 
um you know that are generally purchased by people after uh, giving birth to a uh, to a infant right mm-hmm. so uh, the the family got to know and this they, it it got into a big mess for that individual and um, it it was a lot of uh, havoc that it got created um, in the world of uh, e-commerce and recommendations so not a good scene to be in uh, Uh, so like any other machine learning algorithm recommender system algorithms are also certain kind of algorithms that'll help you to reap the uh, better side of the data however you always need to keep it in mind that you know um, there are some ethical concerns as well right um, i know of uh, certain uh, websites that are using recommender systems to um, recommend uh, products <coughs> that are illegal um they are profiling individuals based on certain attributes with which you have registered um so but then it is it's up to the individual that is developing these recommender systems and uh, you know from a technology perspective these are algorithms available for you and can be implemented uh, very easily by a uh, by a new person as well but <clears throat> you need to be judgmental and you need to use your judgment in order to Uh, come up with these algorithms and ensure that you know um, you use it for all good purposes and not the bad purpose. I hope I was able to answer that question, Sandesh. Sure, Sandesh. I think uh, we can move on. We can start with. Okay. Sh- sure. Sure. So, um, okay, for a minute, all of you think that um, you are um, owner of a website, and uh, you basically did not have. um any um, any transactions done on your website so far um and all that your website does is it basically uh sells uh various um various movies to or you know you you basically can hire a particular movie and then you can watch it and it's a streaming website where you can enjoy movies by paying money right so you're starting that particular website today um and all that you have is just list of movies <laughs> you don't have any um any user profiles you don't have any details about what movies they are all that you have is certain movies that you have actually um you know procured licenses in order to stream on your website so assume that you are such an individual right and now um when people come to your website you don't even force them to register right so today anybody can go to amazon anybody can go to uh, netflix anybody can go to um, you know uh, any website without even having to register and then they can go ahead and browse the content of the website right so there's nothing stopping them from um, you know using those websites as such um, but when i go to your website i won't see any recommendation right so that means i have zero propensity for myself to be uh, uh, to be purchasing good you know, goods from your site so be- because unless i browse through each of the individual items in your website i won't know which one to browse there are no recommendations at all that are coming from your website so there's zero um, re- recommendations therefore you're not increasing the propensity of sa- of your sale at your uh, website so what can i do probably there are a couple of things that i can do because i'm a streaming website though i don't have any data in terms of what are the preferences of the users though i don't know who are these users i can go to websites like imdb i can go to websites like rotten tomatoes right so these websites already maintain a database about how popular each of the movie is right so i can probably source that particular data and use that particular data and recommend the top movies based on the star ratings that are available on imdb or that are available on rotten rotten tomatoes right so what it will help me uh, with is earlier i was not using any kind of technique in order to come up with uh, 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 recommendations for my users however now i am able to um, you know show some recommendations that means from a zero probability of uh, cross sell or up sell i am now showing certain kind of recommendations which moved my needle away from zero right it may not be major but it has moved it to certain extent right and this kind of thing is called as popularity based recommender system right so the recommender system that i've just explained uh, which is based on the 
um, movies, uh, movie review data that I've sourced from external data sources. And now I'm actually recommending it to certain people without even having to know who these users are. Um, this kind of recommender system is called as popularity-based recommender system. Um, and uh, there's another form of recommender system. Say, for example, uh, the same recommender system can be thought of in a different way. Say, I have user profiles. Uh, I have people watching movies day in, day out. And now I could also compute um, the uh, star ratings for those movies. And then I could recommend it. Right? So this is not a data that I have sourced from uh, external data sources, rather leveraging the data that is collected over a period of time in my website itself. And I'm now um, positioning the recommendations based on the star ratings that I've accumulated over a period of time. So both of this falls into the category of popularity-based recommender system. Uh, if you actually look at it, it's super simple, right? So how do I actually compute the uh, average rating of a particular movie? It is nothing but sum of all the ratings that were provided by all my users and um, divided by the number of users that will give me my average rating. It's as simple as, um, so a person called X has given me a rating of three, a person called Y has given me a rating of five, a person called Z has given me a rating of four, right so and three people so the average rating is going to be four it's as simple as that right so i can actually take each of the movies i can compute the star rating and i can provide it as a recommendation um, so there are good and bad things about each of the recommender system like anything in the world uh, each of the uh, algorithms that we talk about in this particular uh, session that also comes with its own benefits and demerits right um, so one of the advantages of this particular recommender system is I don't need really any information about the users. Neither I, I need to know the item description or in, I don't have to know what genre this movie is, what language this movie is. I don't even have to know, um, you know, who are the actors in that particular movie. All that I need to know is what are the star ratings that were provided to this particular movie by several users that have visited this particular, uh, that have uh, watched this particular movie. As long as I have this, this particular information, I can make it a scalable solution and I can, I can recommend that movie to individuals as such, right? I'll take a pause here and uh, wait for any questions because I just covered the theory of popularity-based recommender system. Right, then I'll talk about the demerits because I want to, I want you to get excited about it, then get disappointed. <laughs> Gautam, any questions <clears throat> about uh, popularity? Uh, not yet. Uh, right now, sorry. let's wait for a minute. Mm -hmm. Sure, this is your time. Uh, go ahead and ask questions if you have any questions about popularity-based recommender system. Um, the the definition that I've just given you. Okay, uh, Sunil, meanwhile, uh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, go ahead, Gautam. Mm -hmm. I keep hearing about this uh, thing called a code start problem. Yes. Yeah, and, uh, can you just give me a brief about it? Super. Um, you just, I mean, uh, <laughs> the AI ML world is all about <laughs> you know complex terms, and we just want, we just love to confuse people, right? So, cold start problem is a problem where um, I wanted to recommend things. However, I don't know anything about the individual, right? So, um, so I, I really don't have your profile attributes. You've just come into my website and I don't know where to start with you. And that's when, uh, that's what you call it as cold start, right? And um, so you just hit the bullseye. Popularity-based recommender system is one of the ways in which we've overcome that, uh, 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 you know, cold start problem. Of course, I don't know about you, but I know what others like, right? So uh, you are part of a society um, and therefore there is a propensity for you to like what others are liking. So that's the philosophy that goes on behind it. And I could overcome cold start problem using um, this particular thing called as, uh, you know, popularity based recommended system. It's one of the approaches. Of course, this is not the only approach. But this is one of the approaches with which you can overcome that cold start problem. Mm -hmm. Understood. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so sure. Uh, we have a question from Shivam. Uh, his question is uh, 
do all the users get the same movie recommendation in the, in the context of movie recommendation system? Um, could you rephrase the question, Gautam? Uh, so the question is, would all the users get the same movie recommendation? Yep, yep, very good. Um, I was just about to um, start with the demerits of uh, popularity-based recommender system. Um, so if you look at this particular recommender system, it's very naive and it's very basic, right? So which essentially means when I log into a site, whether I'm a 70 year old or, you know, grandpa or whether I'm a 30 year old, um, you know, office goer or a 18 year old teenage uh, girl that's going to, um, you know, senior school, irrespective of any kind of user, all of them are going to get the same recommendation, right? Uh, that's one of the problems with um, this kind of uh, recommender system, right? So um, the way I'm deriving recommendations is just by looking at the star ratings of the movie. I'm not even considering uh, what are the various attributes of that particular movie and which genre it is, which age does it fit into, all of these things I'm not even considering, right? So which means anybody, everybody that logs in is going to get the same kind of recommender system, right? Of course, I'm not saying this is the perfect recommender system, but it's better than having something than not having anything, right? Earlier, you didn't have anything, right? So now you have moved your needle to say that, okay, I have something here. So look at it. So that means the, probab the probability of somebody clicking on the recommendations that you're providing and you're able to um, get the business is gonna be higher, right? So you could have just showed random things, uh, but random things, you know, there's the propensity of somebody clicking and consuming that content is gonna be a little lesser. So therefore this one is a more intelligent guess than a random thing. Right. So you initially had zero recommendations. Now you move to some recommendation, which is good enough and uh, um, which is random. Uh, but unfortunately, random things, um, you know, stay to be random and not many people click on it and consume the content that you're recommending. Therefore, you're trying to have a more intelligent guess. Uh, and then that intelligent guess is going to be what is popular among the entire crowd. And you go ahead and recommend that particular entire crowd. Uh, I mean, uh, crowd's recommendation to a particular individual. So that's the reason popularity-based recommender system, though it is helpful, it has its own demerits. It's not personalized to an individual, right? It's not personalized according to the attributes that an individual has quoted on his profile. Uh, we're not even demanding uh, you to uh, list out your profile, right? So uh, when you come in, I don't even know who you are. So I'm recommending you the popularity, uh, whatever items are popular out there, as simple as that. Right. Uh, Shiva, I hope uh, that clarifies the question. Sure. So, uh, so we have another interesting question. Uh, so, does recommendation algorithm take into account the number of visits to the site, or will it begin from the first visit? Um, no, it will not. It will not do it from the first visit itself. As in. From a user perspective, as soon as I log in, do I get recommendations? If that is the question, yes, you would get recommend recommendations right from the day one, right? Right from the first login itself, you will see recommendations, right? So uh, to test that, probably what you could do is, um, you know, you could clear your cache and you could clear all your cookies. Uh, try an incognito browser, go to Amazon, you will still see recommendations. And those recommendations are coming from your popularity-based recommender systems, right? Um, how do I overcome the problems uh, that are there in recommend popularity-based recommender systems is going to, uh, is, is something that I want to cover a little bit. Um, so we already know that popularity-based recommender system is a recommender system that is just based on the star ratings, isn't it? But the problem is there could be hundred viewers for a movie there could be a thousand users for a movie. There could be 10,000 users for a movie such, uh, such as Titanic, which is pretty popular, right? In that case, 10,000 people have rated that particular movie. Another movie was rated just once. Now, uh, when I think about the popularity, right? So this is what is happening, right? So I'm just computing the average rating that a movie has acquired, right? So, um, so there is a movie called Gods Must Be Crazy. <laughs> 
and this got a rating of um, five on five and the number of people that rated this particular movie is 15 whereas a movie called titanic this particular movie is watched by uh, has got a rating a mean rating of 4.8 however this was watched by you know 1 lakh people right and there was a new movie um, some movie that got released just last week um, i don't watch a lot of movies but um, let's assume a movie called salt <laughs> Right, so that's the name of the restaurant that I go and have food here in Copenhagen. Uh, but you know, just assume that this is a movie that just got released last week. <laughs> or Gautam, you want to give me some hints on what are the recent movies? English, Hindi, whatever. Hmm? Yeah, I guess, I guess Joker movie. Okay, so assume that this movie called Joker has got an average rating of four. However, because it's a new movie that was just watched by four people. Right now, the problem with popularity based recommender system is gods must be crazy, though it is watched by less number of people. Um, it <coughs> though, because it is rated as 515 by many users, this is going to be your top recommendation. Whereas Titanic, because uh, it was um, it, it was rate it, it got a rating of 4.8. Um, you know, though it is rated by a lot and a lot of people. Um, you know, because your average rating is less, it might happen that this does not fall under your recommendations at all, because there could be other movies like X, Y, Z, which would have got, uh, you know, 515. And uh, because it's not considering the number of people that rated the movie into consideration, um, you know, you have absolutely, um, you know, no choice except to recommend these four movies and not Titanic. So though you know that Titanic is super popular and it has got a rating of 4.8 and a lot, lot of people have watched it, right? So that is something which you're not taking into consideration uh, in a popularity-based recommended system. Another problem that you have is uh, there is more propensity for people to watch newer movies rather than older movies, right? So Joker just got released according to Gautam, right? And uh, if Gautam were to go onto a site, uh, he would watch a movie called Joker, rather than a recommendation called Bazigar, right? Which got released a few years ago, right? Um, so now how do I actually make Joker to be pop, popping up as the recommendation and not Bazigar or not Gods Must Be Crazy, which is a very old movie as such, right? So these are all things that you will have to control according to your business, right? So your business might say that uh, use popularity-based recommender system. A popularity-based recommender system by definition only takes care of star ratings. It does not even look at how many people have rated this particular movie, right? Um, so these are customizations that you'll have to build. Um, so I live in Bangalore, right? So I know that <coughs> a lot of people uh, who are Kannada speakers live in Bangalore, right? Uh, I, I, I being a South Indian, I don't speak a lot of Hindi, but if Hindi movies get recommended to me, then uh, I would not, you know, basically uh, increase the, uh, I, I would not basically watch those movies, even if the recommendations are provided because I don't understand the language very well, right? So what should I do? I should actually supplement my popularity-based recommender system by something else. And what that something else is customization, right? The customization could be based on my geographical coordinates from which I am actually browsing or I'm actually coming onto your site. Uh, you can basically suggest the language movies that I'm inclined towards. Of course, Bangalore is metropolitan, uh, and you know, so you, I mean, Bangalore is cosmopolitan, and you have people speaking all kinds of languages. Uh, but it's a pseudo example, right? You could only suggest Kannada movies to people that are living in Karnataka, right? So that increases the propensity. So what it what we are doing is we are customizing a popularity-based recommender system along. Uh, alongside our needs and alongside the requirements of our stakeholders, right? So this is what we're doing. And uh, that makes the popularity-based recommender system a hybrid recommender system, right? So the difference between a popularity-based recommender system and hybrid recommender system is uh, a popularity-based recommender system when tweaked according to your needs, according to your wants, and according to the business requirements, it 
adds additional logic that is customized according to your business needs. It's popularity based recommended system plus some X and that X is defined by you. Therefore, we call it as hybrid recommender system. Um, in a nutshell, a hybrid recommender system is something which is uh, a mix of multiple uh, logics that provide you recommendation, right? So it's as simple as that. Okay, so enough of theory. Um, I would like to show you how to basically uh, build a recommender system, a popularity based recommender system in Python. Um, this is going to be a couple of lines of code. Nothing to worry. It's going to be super duper easy. I'm going to help you to easily create a recommender system right away. Mm. Um, I can take one or two questions, Gautam, if you have any. Mm. Yeah, even if it's your own question. Mm. Uh, yes, Sunil, I think uh, two people have asked a question on the same topic. Uh, uh -huh. So one of the question is, uh, why isn't FROP algorithm covered in the list of algorithms we mentioned? And the follow-up question on that is, uh, isn't, uh, does popularity-based recommendation make use of a priori algorithm? Uh, so a priori algorithm is, is also covered as part of uh, the algorithm stack that we do in uh, um, in uh, uh, great learning. Say so you see here something called as association rule mining. Um, so I, I can imagine somebody asking this question would have gone through their MBA class. They would have taught a priori algorithm there, which also does recommendation. So during the start of the class, I've also talked about a meme that I've looked at, right? So uh, you buy a, a stool, the recommendations that come in are a rope and a fan, right? So uh, in other words, a person that bought this also bought this, right? So this is a recommendation that you see on Amazon, right? So this recommendation or the combination bundle is coming directly from application of a priori. Right. So this is otherwise taught as market basket analysis in MBA classes. Um, we a priori is one such algorithm that does uh, market basket analysis or, or association rule mining. Uh, there is also another algorithm very similar to a priori called FP growth. Uh, this also does uh, bundling of products. Right. So the output is going to be the same. A priori is just one technique to, uh, you know, uh, achieve uh, association rule mining. Um, so uh, a priori in combination with popularity based recommender system, um, yes, you could use it. Um, uh, there's nothing stopping you from using it. However, it becomes a hybrid recommender system because you're combining more than one techniques, right? So popularity based recommender system is one technique. Uh, a priori is another technique. So you're combining both of the techniques. Therefore, it makes it a, a hybrid recommender system. Mm -hmm. I hope I was able to handle that question, Gautam. Mm. Sure. So yeah, I think uh, one last question and then we can uh, uh, move on to the actual hands-on coding session. Right? Mm -hmm. So one of the questions is, uh, how do we identify bias in popularity-based recommendation systems? Um, uh, can you define bias, Gautam? What kind of a bias are we talking about? Mm. Uh, okay. Uh, so my, my own thoughts here, bias is, uh, and a quick judgment based on very few information, right? Something like that. Um, I'm, so there is actually an intuitive bias in popularity-based recommender system because I am assuming that you are like uh, the other people that are living in the world, right? So that's a bias that I'm carrying and that's the bias that is enforcing me to look at this uh, popularity-based recommender system, right? When I recommend things that that other people are liking, that essentially means you are like other people, right? So that's an assumption and that's a bias, right? Uh, unfortunately, that bias may not be true all the time. Uh, there could be one sadist out there who only watches some unique kind of movies. And even if I do popularity-based recommenders, uh, recommendation system to him, he might not like the movies that we recommend because he's unique in nature. And that's the reason we call it call him a sadist or a, we call him a very unique guy. That's because his characteristics are very, very different to normal, right? right? So popularity-based recommender system itself has certain intuitive bias. Uh, and I, I don't see any way to eliminate it from the normal algorithm. Hmm. Understood. All right, uh, I, think, uh, I think we can move on uh, soon. Okay, sure. Um,
Great. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a small uh, popularity based recommender system here. Um, so this is no way exhaustive uh, session, unlike we do something in great learning Gautam. This is just to introduce to the participants how easy it is to code in Python. And this is just to create that comfort with individuals saying that, you know, Python is no big deal. Right, as long as you know the concept, it's it's super easy. So that's the feeling that I wanted to create amongst people. Um, so that's the reason I made it light rather than very intense as such. Um, so uh, there is a there is an open data set. Um, so like you have open sources, like you have Linux, etc. Um, you have open data sets that are provided by multiple companies. Group Lens is one such company that actually provided an open data set. Um, for people to consume. So this is free to use, this is free to experiment, this is free to consume, etc. for non-commercial purposes, right? <laughs> so generally we download the uh, open data sets to play around and to learn a concept. Um, so open lens, uh, so movie lens data set is one such data set. Um, so I'm going to show you how that data set looks like. Uh, on my screen, uh, you can see this particular data set called ML uh, latest small. So there is a big data set, there is a small data set, there is a medium data set. So for the purpose of this exercise, I have downloaded the small data set as such. Uh, the primary things that we're going to look at is these two files. One is movies.csv, another one is ratings.csv, right? So movies.csv file basically looks like this. Uh, I use uh, Linux Mint, so this might seem a little weird for you LibreOffice. it's it's a, a replacement for excel right uh, it's an open source tool again right so what you see in the movies the data set is there is a primary key that defines um, the uh, identity of a movie um, so you have title of the movie and you also have genre that uh, each of the movie belongs to right and at the same time you also have another file here in uh, movie uh, movie lens data, a small data set, which, which is like this, right? So you have the user ID, you have the movie ID and the rating that was given by him and when was this rating given, right? So uh, the way to read this is um, a user ID called one uh, has given a rating of four for the movie ID called one and at this particular time, right? And how do I club both of this? I have this primary key called movie ID in this file. I mean, I have this uh, foreign key and here also I have this same key. So therefore it makes it possible to join both of the files, right? It's as simple as that, right? So now let's go to our popularity based recommender system. Uh, you see some uh, declarations here. Um, if you are a C programmer, you would have used hash include, right? Hash include stdio.h, hash include conivo.h, hash include math.h, etc. So in Python, including a package essentially means that will allow me to use any of the functions that are defined under those packages. And this is exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm declaring certain packages to be available for me. That way I can consume the functions. Uh, some of you who are expert coders in Python and some of you who are, uh, um, you know, really good coders in Python, this might sound super primitive to you because I'm trying to explain itself. <coughs> uh, but the reason I'm explaining that is uh, uh, from Gautam, I understand that, you know, the, the people that are attending this session uh, some of them have no familiarity with Python. Therefore, uh, uh, you know, he has requested me to go in detail on the Python notebooks, right? So that's the reason I'm trying to explain each of the uh, each of the uh, lines here or each of the uh, code lines here, right? So import OS actually means um, it's an operating system uh, based. Uh, uh, it, it's an operating system library. So it will actually provide me all the routines like change directory, get the current working directory, et cetera, et cetera. So NumPy is, uh, you know, NumPy arrays. So you have a numerical array and uh, you wanted to process that numerical array, then you will have to go with this particular library called NumPy. 
pandas is nothing but um, a table right uh, a data structure with uh, which is of a table format is called as uh, panda in uh, uh, python it's it's nothing but a table right an excel table can be uh, you know can be uh, thought of as an analogy to pandas in python right so what i'm giving here is a pseudo name to it i don't want to call the a function as pandas dot xyz rather i would want to give it a short name and i just gave it a nickname called np to numpy uh, and pd to pandas right and i'm changing the working directory here um, did i tell you that os stands for operating system so this is os dot chdir which is which uh, which stands for change directory right i'm changing the directory of uh, uh, directory a uh, current working directory on this python notebook to this particular directory where i have the uh, movie lens data set right this is where the movie lens data set is i have picked this up and i have pasted it on the python notebook that way i could load that into my memory and start working on that particular data set right and here what i'm doing is i'm doing a read of the ratings file right so there was a file that i've showed you called ratings uh, ratings.csv and that file i wanted to read into my local variable called as ratings underscore data and this is a user defined variable a panda that i have actually declared and i have uh, uh, i am i'm actually assign uh, reading the csv file data into this particular uh, data structure and i'm just saying dot head dot head basically uh, shows you the top five records that are uh, in that particular data structure. So when I do dot head, I mean, if you are done Unix, I'm pretty sure you know the head and tail commands. Um, head shows you the top five and uh, tail shows you the bottom five. Um, so head, I see that user ID is there, movie ID is there, rating is there and timestamp is there. And that's exactly what I see here as well, right? So now that essentially confirms that I have successfully read my file and similarly, movies.csv right so there is a movies file uh, movies.csv that i'm reading and i'm printing the head right that get me that gets me the uh, head of that particular file as well mm -hmm. right so the next thing is i don't want to deal them separately rather what i wanted to do is i wanted to merge both of them uh, in a sql kind of situation typically you would have done your uh, uh, joins right inner join outer join etc uh, in order to merge two different tables, right? So if you're an Excel person, what you would have done is you would have used um, 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 VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP in order to merge both uh, two different uh, data sets that are available in Excel. Uh, here, we also have a function called merge, right? Merge is a function that is available in Pandas library. So remember, I've given a short name for Pandas called PD, right? So PD dot merge will merge two different data frames, right? Uh, two different pandas. Ratings data is one panda that I've read in my earlier uh, thing. Movie names is another uh, another data set that I have read. I am actually combining both these data sets on a column called movie ID. This movie ID was the foreign key that was available on ratings file, and uh, it was the primary key on my. Uh, on my uh, movies file. So therefore I'm merging both of them using this particular uh, file, which gives me uh, a new variable called movie underscore data. And I'm actually printing that particular uh, movie data's head, which will print the top five uh, records from it. You have user ID, movie ID, rating. And I also now know what this particular movie is. It is Toy Story and what is the genre. So this particular data structure is created from two different files as such. So once I do it, now I am ready to compute the ratings, right? So how do I do that? It's group by, it's no different from your SQL. So what I'm actually doing is I am looking at the entire column here, this column, whichever has the Toy Story, then I'm grouping all of them and I'm taking the mean of the ratings. So there is rating across each of the uh, title there. So for every Toy Story record here, I'm looking at what is the corresponding rating and I'm actually computing the average, right? Similar to what I've done earlier in the calculator, right? So um, somebody has rated as four plus four 
for the same movie plus 4.5 plus 2.5 plus 4.5 right so how many records have i considered five records so an average is uh, sum of all the elements by the number of elements which will give me 3.9 rating for toy story movie right so similarly i have computed it for every other thing so the moment you do oh, this particular command it computes the mean for every record every movie in my data set and then it gives me um, the the average rating for each of the movie and i'm just doing a head head essentially means show me the uh, first five records right this is in no order it just says that uh, movie called 71 it has a rating of 4.0 hellboy has a rating of 4.0 3.5 5 4 etc right it is just doing a common uh, it is just doing an average but now i wanted to understand now that i have computed mean i wanted to understand what are those top movies that I should recommend? So what should I do? I simply need to sort this particular result by descending order. So which means any movie that I've got five on five rating will be shown on the top of my list. And any movie that is scored really less, it will be on the bottom of the list, right? So all that I need to do is just tweak this particular line with sort values. Sort values is another Panda function, which will automatically sort it. Right. So sort by descending, sort by ascending. This is what you would do uh, if you were to do it in SQL or if you were to do in Excel. Right. So similarly, you have a command here to do that, which is sort underscore values. And I'm saying ascending equal to false, which makes it descending. Right. So uh, it's it's contra. Right. Uh, it's ascending equal to true or ascending equal to false. If you say ascending equal to false, that means it's descending. And I'm trying to show the first five records after doing the sort, right? So here you go. These are the movies that were rated as top, right? And I see I, I like one movie here, which is Winnie the Pooh and the Day of Concern, <laughs> right? Um, all right, so once I do it, I also have a concern here. The thing is, I actually averaged the mean of all the movies, uh, movie ratings, but I did not look at how many people have rated this particular movie. This I could do, right? So because I have a data structure here, which tells me each user, how did he rate a particular movie, right? So I could go here and do a count of how many people have rated each of the movie, right? So all that I need to do is the same command, instead of actually doing the count, uh, the mean, I'm going to do the count. Right. So <clears throat> look at the title of the movie group by the title. Right. Take the ratings and do a count of how many people have rated. Right. And sort it by descending order and uh, do a head. Right. Which means um, which means show only the top five records. Right. You can see that Forrest Gump has been watched by 329 people, whereas Matrix is watched only by 278 people. Right, so there is a difference in the number of people that are actually rating the movie. And in fact, we don't even know how many people have watched the movie. So all that we have is how many people have rated the movie, right? So, and now, so that's the problem. Now, uh, I, I can even go ahead and create another data frame with um, ratings, mean and count. I want to have two, uh, two columns side by side like this, right? So I want to have, one column which shows the title of the movie, which shows the title of the movie and the mean rating of that movie. Mm. This should be another column. And I also wanted the count for that movie. Mm. So I wanted three columns in a data structure, in a table data structure. Here I'll have name, mean rating and count of the movie side by side, right? So that is what I'm trying to create here. First, I'm saying that create an empty data frame and in that particular empty data frame, go ahead and create the mean rating uh, as one of the columns. So which is this particular column, which is this particular column, the title and the mean rating. And first I create these two. And after that, what I'm doing is I'm actually creating a new column in the same data structure, which is called as a ratings count. And I'm just doing adding that particular uh, column into the existing data frame as such, 
So if I look at the finally created uh, data frame, this is how it is going to look like, right? You can see that uh, a movie called Salem's Lot, right, is rated by 5.0, right? Rated as 5.0. However, the number of people that actually rated that movie is just one. This is ridiculous, right? So uh, there is one person that is sitting in the one corner of the world. He just watched that particular movie and he rated it as 5.0. Right, so this means even though Hellboy and uh, uh, Till There Till There Was You, all these movies were good, that won't get recommended because, you know, obviously, uh, you know, the these are the 5.0 gets superseded because we are just considering the popularity of a movie by its star rating. Right, so this is the demerit demonstration that I wanted to do. Um, now, what can you do to overcome this problem? You can go ahead and customize the logic according to your needs. One is, I even know what is the year in which a particular movie got released. Right, you can see that Forrest Gump got released in 1994. I can do some kind of text analytics here. I can do some kind of regular expression here to separate the year. Right, the the recent the year is increase the uh, rating by certain proportion. How much is that proportion is something which you need to decide according to your business, right? Um, the old movies get, old classics get certain percentage of addition, right? So it is like saying this, right? So there is a um, um, uh, there is a village. I mean, I know certain states that provide reservation based on where you study, uh, whether it's a village school or an urban school. If you had studied in a village, then the entrance exam marks um, for engineering or medicine, you will get a 15% addition to the entrance exam marks that you have scored because uh, village, you don't have the same facilities as the urban schools. So that's the assumption and they add it. So now in this case, what you are doing is you are basically um, considering that um, you know, year is one of the factors that is critical for you and newer movies should be recommended more than the older movies then obviously you bump up the, the ratings percentage, uh, ratings by uh, a certain percentage that you think of if it's a new movie, right? Uh, you could also think about weighing down or weighing up based on, uh, weighing up or weighing down the rating based on the number of movies, the uh, number of uh, users that have watched that particular movie. You could even think about how to, uh, how to bump up or pump down the average rating based on the number of people that have actually provided the star rating as such, right? So these are all customizations that you can do to popularity-based recommender system um, that will make this recommender system shine uh, and, and uh, really provide uh, uh, good recommendations on your websites, right? So this is one such recommender system that I wanted to talk about. Uh, it's a very, very primitive recommender system that will help you, uh, uh, you know, provide recommended systems uh, in a scalable way, even if you don't have any information about the movies, any information about the users in your website. Okay, cool. I'll um, Now that I've covered one recommended system, I'll give a couple of minutes for you to ask me questions and I'll be happy to answer any of them. Uh, Gautam, over to you, please. Mm -hmm. uh, sure, uh, so one of the questions from Ankit is uh, uh, what Simply having a sum of ratings solve the problem of trade off between mean and count. Um, sum of ratings, uh, um, yes, you you could have it, but again, if a lot of people have rated that particular movie, then obviously the sum would be large. Uh, if very less number of people have rated that movie, the sum will be less. So how do you compensate for that, Ankit? So that's a problem. Mm -hmm. So that's the same problem. Uh, we are we are looping back to the same problem, right? So if ten thousand people have rated a movie, uh, then obviously the sum is going to be large. How do you even compare the sums? Which sum is good? Which sum is bad? I don't even have the boundary, right? It can. What does a sum of one lakh twenty thousand four hundred mean to you? Is it good? Is it bad? Yeah, there are no answers. So that's the problem. Mm. So you can't simply do a sum. Mm. Okay, and uh, there's a follow-up question from Ankit. Is there any library in Python exclusive for recommendation system algorithm? Um, yes, there are multiple recommender system libraries. Mm. So recommender lab is one such library. 
um there is another library called surprise um um surprise stands for simple uh, python library for recommendations right um so there are other third party libraries also uh, but these two are uh, super popular <laughs> recommender lab and uh, surprise yeah uh, okay there are another question uh, uh, so can we use a logistic activation on rating counts and then multiply it with ratings then yes you could do all of that um, um gautam but these are all customizations according to a particular individual right so um it does not have to be logistic um, i don't know why uh, that participant is saying we should use logistic um uh, but you could make any kind of customization um, i i don't get a sense of why the person's talking about using logistic so do you wanted to do you wanted to sort out Uh, whether some recommendations are zero or one i mean it should always be uh, whether it should be zero or one should i recommend or not is that the kind of thought process that is there i don't know uh -huh. sure uh, so i think there is more of a personal question from my side uh, i think not particularly to uh, popular given recommendations but recommendation systems in general uh, are isn't the recommendation system limiting the horizon of exploration for the users mm, very very good question um gautam um so um okay so in reality when you deploy a recommender system for uh, uh, amazon or some kind of popular uh, popular website uh, what happens is you don't um, you don't rely on one single recommender system right if i have 10 recommender systems uh one recommend a uh, couple of recommend couple of recommendations will be from popularity couple of recommendations will be from content based popular a couple of recommendations will be from association rule mining couple of re recommender systems would also be random right out of the 10 recommendations you will be mixing and matching outputs of multiple recommender systems deployed concurrently and that is how you would even get recommendations that are uh, uh very very not at all related to you right so this is just to provide you an opportunity of exploration of the available products in your uh, in your bucket right right in fact there is a kind of recommender system uh which is called as content based recommender system say for example um you went ahead and bought a levis jeans right according to content based recommender system what i should be recommending to you is blue jeans throughout your life right yeah. that's because that is the one that you that is the recommender system you have showed your interest on earlier right according to the attributes that i've picked up on your recommend on your profile you like blue jeans a blue levis jeans so next time you log in you'll be shown the same thing 60 years later you log in you will be shown the same thing hmm. if i were to purely use content based recommend system hmm. right so that's the reason uh, every recommend system algorithm that we are uh, we're going to talk about or uh, you know or, or the ones that we deal in uh, our uh, recommend system classes in gl uh, gautam each one of them come with its own advantages and disadvantages and one of the things i articulate to uh, my students is uh, you know when to use what and how to make how to overcome the problems each of the recommender systems have right in fact we also play uh, a kind of uh, uh, you know game in the class uh, we take a use case and we also talk about uh, what is the perfect recommender system for this particular situation mm. right we do all of that which gives an intuition not only from an algorithm per se it also gives them a hint as to in production or in in an industry situation which recommender system should be used where right so the application is what makes it more powerful right so the coding anybody can do i mean there are lots and lots of libraries are available today to do um, uh, you know to uh, to kind of finish your coding in a couple of lines uh, but that's not important as a uh, practitioner right what is important is to understand where to apply what to apply and when to apply yeah. and sure. that's what we actually contribute to got it uh, so i think we have a few other questions uh, 
the author who asks or what is the best way to test the accuracy of your recommended system okay sure um so a recommended system um so it's it's a very complex topic in order to how to uh, assess the recommendation uh, but the general metrics we use to Uh, express the performance of a recommended system uh, you can use both regression metrics as well as classification metrics so i'll tell you what um, there is a matrix factorization based recommended system which will help you to predict what rating would you be giving as a person for a movie that you have never watched right um, in that particular case what i'm predicting is a number right and if i have a test data set on which i already have uh, the ratings that an individual will have given for a particular kind of movie i can compare these two numbers and derive something called as rmsc which is an act, which is a metric for regression right uh, if i have uh, if i have designed a content based recommender system um, then what i would be outputting is okay these are the movies that you would likely to watch so it is not a number anymore it is whether you would like it or not right in that case i have a test data set where i can compare against the list of movies that i like and i can look at my predictions look at both of them and say okay these many recommendations i have done and out of these many these many were actually uh, liked by that individual so i can express it as an accuracy uh, you know so accuracy is a classification metric so uh that's how you will express the performance of uh, a recommender system uh we talked uh, briefly about a priori algorithm or association rule mining so um you would come up with bundling of products uh, there is a metric called lift which will tell you if i were to actually bundle these these two products uh then this is going to be the increase in sale from the current uh, sales uh, however there is no such metric that will tell you that if you really keep these uh, products as bundle this is how much is the performance achievement that you will do because it's an unsupervised method altogether so there is no such metric unless you deploy it in production you wouldn't get to know uh, ankita i hope i was able to clear that question mm-hmm. uh, yeah, i think one last question before we move on i think there's another question but uh, we will take one question uh, mm-hmm. can there be a system so rohan asks can there be a system that recommends and self learns based on the choices made by the user yeah yeah definitely um so um so i just i did tell you about the random uh, products that are showcased as part of your recommenders recommendation system right so out of the 10 recommendations that i provide on my website two of it will be uh, random products that are completely unrelated to you and you must be thinking why is this particular movie or why is this product recommended to you right um, the reason why random helps us assume that i have showed a couple of random uh, products to you and you have clicked on those products and spent some time on those products what does it mean now it means that though it is a random product i have curated some interest for you to uh, look into that product and understand what it is so that means it is worth exploring that particular product further with you right so that is the learning that i'm having by you clicking on that particular product and uh, by you spending time on reading that i uh, pro- product description right so i am learning patterns about you and i'm making some judgments based uh, based based on your clicking pattern right and that's what i'm learning again and again right in tandem uh um, just because you watched gods must be crazy if i keep showing you comedy movies and if you are a serious person you never you're never going to click on those movies that i recommend to you so that means over a period of time i learned that none of the recommendations that i'm providing to you are uh, worthy enough because i have been recommending only comedy movies to you so what happens next next time i'm going to subtract all the comedy movies from my recommendation that i need to recommend to you because i learned over a period of time that you will not click on comedy movies even if i recommend to you right so it's a combination of popularity uh, pl- um, a plus content uh, minus the genre that you hate yeah. is it clear gautam uh, yes uh, yes sir i think you can okay 
All right, fantastic. Right, in the interest of time, we're just left with 45 minutes. So let's get quickly going with another recommended system called collaborative filtering, right? Uh, so like I just explained, we are super duper good at uh, coining new terms and we wanted to, we love to actually confuse people. Um, collaborative filtering is a new term. This scares many people. So there are two kinds of collaborative filters. One is user, user, collaborative filter. Mm. Another one is item, item collaborative filter. Mm. Okay, so in the interest of time, let's focus on one just to understand what this uh, user user collaborative filtering is. And then we will also try to implement using uh, surprise library, right? Um, so birds of same feathers flock together, right? We all know that. And uh, we also listen from our parents that uh, I looked at four of your friends and uh, they're doing crazy things. So I'm assuming that you're also a crazy boy. So I've heard this many times from my parents. So they all say that I looked at your friends and all of them <laughs> really do crazy things. So I'm assuming you also do crazy things. Um, so it's it's very similar philosophy here also, right? Um, uh, my name is Sunil. I watched five movies. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. There is a friend of mine. Um, okay, and he watched movies three, four, uh, six, seven, eight. Right. Now. One, two, three, four, five is the uh, movies that I have watched. Three, four, six, seven, eight are the movies he has watched, right? So what we have in common is three and four, right? And he has rated three and four as five on five. Mm -hmm. And I also rated uh, the movie called three as five on five, right? Four as one on five, mm -hmm. right? Um, I also rated four as one on five. Mm. Now, what do I understand by the ratings, right? How do I determine he's my friend or he is similar to me, right? Um, say, so let's assume this guy is Sunil. Mm. And this guy is Gautam, mm. right? So the first and foremost thing is, Sunil has liked certain movies. Gautam has liked certain movies. However, there are some common movies among Sunil and Gautam and both of them rated it in the same way, right? So that means his characteristics and his liking has to be very similar to mine, right? I'm just giving a very brief example with five movies here so we understand the topic better, right? So there are three movies that he has not watched but there are two movies that Sunil and Gautam has watched and they don't know each other. We don't know who these people are and what this one, two, three, four, five are, right? We don't even know, right? All that we know is Sunil and Gautam has rated certain movies in a very similar way. What does it indicate? It means that their traits are very similar, right? So next time when Sunil logs in, the movies that Gautam has watched but Sunil did not watch will be recommended to Sunil, right? What are the movies that Gautam watched but Sunil did not watch? It is six, seven, eight, right? So next time Sunil logs into the website, the movies that will be recommended to him are six, seven, eight, right? Similarly, when Gautam logs in, the movies that will be recommended to him are one, two, and five. That's actually because these are the three movies Sunil has watched. However, Gautam did not watch, right? So somehow just by the star ratings, I was able to establish the fact that both of their likes are very similar. That's the reason I am actually saying that they're going to have the same kind of likings on the new movies that they have not watched at all, right? So it's, in fact, Sunil and Gautam ha doesn't have to be related. 
i do not even have to understand who what are the attributes of sunil i do not have to understand what are the attributes of gautam i do not even have to understand what are the descriptions what are the genres who are the hero heroines and other actresses actors that have acted in each of the movies without having all of these details just based on star ratings i should be able to establish the fact that these two uh, users are very similar and based on that similarity i'm going to recommend the movies to one other right and next pops up the question how do i assess the similarity between the users there are tons and tons of techniques for it one is euclidean distance another one is manhattan another one is watts distance earth movers distance cosine distance etc etc however a simple technique like correlation Uh, a pearson's correlation right so you don't have to be a techie or you don't have to be a statistician to understand that understand what pearson correlation means right um so our correlation means um so i'll give you a very simple example right when the when uh, when the temperatures increase in uh, bangalore the ice cream sales also trends up right what does it mean it means that the trend of both the uh, temperature and uh, the trend of ice cream sales both are traveling in the same direction when it gets colder in bangalore the ice cream sales dips right um, this is both of them trending in the negative direction that means both of this series are trending in the same direction right so that's what uh, correlation computes right because both of them are trending in the same direction uh, we call it as strongly positively correlated right uh, and when it gets sunny in bangalore the sales of woolen clothes drops so this means temperatures increase the sales of woolen clothes dips right so this means uh, the series are negatively correlated right so you have a series um that is strongly positively correlated or you have a series that is strongly negatively correlated right and there could be no correlation also right ice cream sales in india versus the deaths in germany heart attack deaths in germany nowhere correlated right so uh, it it could be random series of numbers right but if you look at it i have some common movies between sunil and um, um sunil and uh, uh, gautam so let me write it like this common movies sunil and gautam okay what are the common movies here the common movies are 3 and 4 sunil has rated uh, the movie called 3 uh, as 5 and 1 gautam has rated the movie called 5 a movie called 3 as 5 and the movie called 4 as 1 now what do i do i have two series this is one series this is another series and i apply a function called pearson's correlation which will tell me that they are strongly positively correlated which means they are very similar people right now based on that data whichever when sunil logs in i could recommend gautam's pictures gaut the ones that gautam watched and rated highly right it is not the ones that gautam watched and disliked and i'm going to i'm going to show him the movies the i mean uh, show the recommendations to sunil the movies that gautam has watched but highly rated right because that is the those are the ones that sunil will like too because sunil's uh, thinking is very similar to that of gautam right so all that i have done is i have two series here this is one series this is another series i just did pearson's correlation which will tell me if they are correlated or not correlated or negatively correlated negatively correlated essentially means that we are two different people right i like comedy and he likes horror right i like um, um drama and romance kind of movies and he is a very serious person right so there is no way that his movies will be liked by me so i'll never even venture into it right so therefore um you know uh, only if strongly positively correlated i kind of venture ahead in order to implement uh, recommendations which are user user uh, the funny thing here that we we'll all have to observe is i am describing sunil and gautam as similar 
just based on the way they have rated the movies that are common among both of these users i don't even know what attributes of sunil is where was he born what language he speaks where does his parents stay uh, does he have a family in bangalore what languages he speaks how much does he earn none of these attributes i know right similarly i don't know anything about gautam right i don't even know what these movies are 1 2 3 4 5 1 3 4 6 7 8 means i don't even know anything about it all that i am uh, all that i'm using as input in order to compare two different individuals and identify they are very similar as the way the movies has been rated by these two individuals right the only input that i would need is just the ratings right so this is what user user collaborative filtering is right this is the simplest way to explain user user similarity however in reality you uh, what you do is you define how many uh, people are there like sunil so you can say that identify 50 people who are who have rated common movies uh, very similar to that of sunil you can do a, a intersection of all those movies that sunil did not watched but his friends have watched when i say friends they are nothing but they are the people that are very similar to that of sunil right pull all those movies that are not watched by sunil but they all have watched and if they have rated uh, very high uh, whichever movies were rated very high by people that think very similar to that of sunil uh, aggregate all of them and show them as recommendations to sunil as simple as that right you can say that identify 50 neighbors identify 30 neighbors identify 100 neighbors etc etc right it could happen that sunil watches korean movies and nobody else watches korean movies here right so i i could not find any neighbors at all that means i don't have any common movies with anybody right that is one problem another problem with this approach is i um um i am a new user right i have not rated any of the movies when i when i'm not rated any of the movies how can you go ahead and identify neighbors or how can you identify people that think similar to me there's no way you can identify that right uh, what about a new movie even if it's a new movie that is coming into my library nobody has watched and nobody has rated that particular movie so there's no way that it goes as a recommendation to anybody that logs in right so these are all the demerits of user user recommendation system uh, and uh, fortunately we have other methods to overcome these problems uh, but i'm not going to be discussing them here uh, because of the scope of the session is limited uh, i don't want to complicate this as well so uh, uh, but the but the beauty of user user recommended system is it's scalable and uh, i don't have to know a lot of details about the movie as long as i have the star ratings good enough go ahead and recommend mm. all right cool i'll pause here for a couple of minutes just to take questions and then we'll show you a demo using surprise we just left with 30 minutes so um um so um questions please pop in immediately mm. uh, sure sir so we have few interesting questions uh, to start with uh, uh so ardhya sharma asks uh, is it safe to use libraries for recommendation when it comes to huge companies like amazon considering the risks mm -hmm. with uh, cyber security mm -hmm. sure um it is safe uh, sharma um so you know most of this big companies they even write their own libraries and outsource it uh, i mean open source it to the external communities um so cyber security threats um are are kind of handled separately um you are behind a firewall and there are some data governance policies and model that you built is also secured in certain way so it is kind of uh, you know um, kind of uh, taken care internally itself and uh, nobody writes the code from scratch in the industry as such i mean that's that's utter waste of time right so um if neural network library is available or if a um if a decision tree library is library is a library function is available why would i ask somebody to code it from scratch that itself takes hell lot of time right so i don't think uh, anybody would write any of the functions 
uh, from scratch unless you're working in the industry. Mm, I mean, unless you're working in a research lab or in, in a university. I remember the days when I was doing PhD, my, uh, my guide raised concerns saying that, you know, you're doing a lot of things using libraries. Uh, I want you to understand how a particular uh, library function works. So go ahead and uh, code it from scratch. Uh, but again, you know, this will be your initial days of your research, right? So they wanted you to get more knowledge in terms of, um, you know, the library, uh, the uh, various algorithms. Um, they are paranoid about you not getting a lot of knowledge and you becoming another software engineer um, rather than a data scientist. So that is their concern. That's the reason they've asked you to, uh, they ask you to kind of code from scratch. But, but in industry, I've never seen anybody doing it. I mean, as long as you are able to identify the right library uh, and uh, you're able to um, do some kind of testing and prove that it is well worth trying, it's good enough. Mm. Sure. We have another interesting question last mail. Uh, so Ketha Srinivas, he asks, uh, is there any body of work in recommendation systems where uh, we can predict based on the current emotional state of the user? Current uh, emotional state. Uh, emotional state of the user. Okay. Great. Um, sure. Um, that brings me back to one of the experiences that I had in Hackathon. Um, so IBM Watson uh, had a hackathon, um, you know, very uh, uh, about a couple of years ago, and I was also a participant. And the uh, <coughs> the product that won the hackathon was uh, mood based uh, uh, mood based songs prescription mm. engine, right? So uh, the way it works is it scans through um, the SMSs that you are sending. Uh, the articles that you're reading and assesses the mood of an individual. Um, and, and it also takes into consideration the current weather, right? It actually looks at the uh, weather APIs that are there. It actually uh, gets data in terms of whether what time of the day it is uh, and uh, whether it is raining or uh, uh, what it is. Are you in a restaurant? It actually takes care of the geographical coordinates of an individual. Using all of these factors, it actually suggests the songs that you would be liking. Right? Um, I know that another company has productionalized this particular uh, um, songs recommender system. Um, when you're actually bathing uh, in a shower, uh, there is automatic music played. Um, so depending on who is bathing, and depending on, um, you know, uh, depending on the time of the day you are bathing, the songs uh, that are played uh, automatically changes. And that is also based on the recommender system. I think it's Snyder or some company that has implemented this logic. Now, I don't exactly remember the name of the company, but there does exist a company which does it, does the recommendation like this, based on the mood and emotional state of an individual. Sure. Uh, a follow-up question. Uh... We have Ankit who is asking, is collaborative filtering in principle similar to a nearest neighbor? Uh, yes, in principle, yes. Uh, that's what you're doing here as well. Um, but K nearest neighbors, uh, you generally use <laughs> Euclidean distance, right? Uh, when you do Euclidean distance or Manhattan distance, a number called 500. Uh, 500, is it, uh, does it mean Gautam is my neighbor or not? You can't decide on it. And that's the reason we go with cosine similarity or Pearson's, dis Pearson's correlation kind of thing, uh, where you would, um, where you would uh, have a defined boundary, right? So when you do cosine similarity or Pearson's distance, you know that the range is between uh, Pearson's correlation, you know that the range is between minus one and plus one. Plus one essentially means that they're very, very similar. A value of 0 0.5 means, okay, they're like averagely similar. A value of minus five, minus 0 0.5 means that they are completely in the tangent direction. So you can define a boundary like that when it comes to a Pearson's correlation or uh, cosine similarity. However, the same thing is not possible with other distances like Euclidean or Manhattan. And that's the reason uh, at least in document uh, um, you know, classification or uh, uh, information retrieval or in recommended systems, I would strongly advocate to use, um, you know, cosine similarity uh, over other distances. Mm. So in that, 
in that per se yes it is uh, correct ankit you rightly pointed that it is all about identifying the neighbors but the mechanism for which it is used is very different mm. sure uh, then i think i would uh, we have two interesting questions on the similar line లెవెల్ ఆఫ్ మ్యాథమెటిక్స్ దట్ ఈస్ దేర్ ఇన్ uh in recommender systems at least right this is one of the lighter areas where recommender systems uh, is not uh, i mean uh, mathematics is not required much uh, in fact um you know some of the classes i've got feedback saying that uh, <laughs> you know where is the mathematics portion of it um so there is one area called um, matrix factorization or latent factor uh, factor based recommender system there we use something called as singular value decomposition uh, that is the only area where you would be using a lot of uh, dry principles uh, behind matrices in other uh, form of recommender systems i don't even see a lot of mathematics exists as long as you know simple arithmetic you're good enough <laughs> when i say simple arithmetic it means addition subtraction multiplication division if you know four of this it's a cake walk right it's only the svd portion where you have a little bit of um little bit of mathematics uh, you know that is that's okay i mean is this one area of uh, recommender systems um but then um, when i teach this recommender system uh, in my class in uh, gl what i do is i teach it with the help of excel uh, excel also has a lot of uh, good ways to demonstrate what is happening behind an algorithm and uh, we use this particular uh, excel as a tool to demonstrate that so that also gives you an intuition of what is happening um, so most people i understand the moment they see sigma and they see lambda they see uh, alpha you know the <laughs> the mind turns off and you don't want to go any further uh, we try to avoid consciously that mind block and we try to help you to understand and give you an intuition of what is happening behind an algorithm uh, in plain english language um, so uh, so that's what is important i guess sure yeah don't worry you are you'll be okay <laughs> sure. uh, so so sunil uh, one last question uh, so we have two uh-huh. two people asking similar question right so okay we have multiple yeah. recommendation system and uh, so the question is uh, you know which algorithm should be used when and is there some kind of a guide or a cheat sheet um um no there is no such guide or anything because recommender systems itself can be applied to any kind of problem out there right so um there is no cheat sheet or anything but it's more of an intuition uh, um you know we we talk about certain use cases um uh, but I, as far as i know there is no such you know for x do this for y you do this and nothing like that as far as i know <laughs> sorry mm-hmm. okay you. yeah thank you gautam those are wonderful questions thank you all the participants um, really uh, good questions all right so we will now go ahead and uh, um look at this user user recommender system and i'll try to explain how that works as well mm-hmm. okay so um, the library function that we use in order to use uh, in order to get k nearest neighbor uh, in order to get user user collaborative filtering like balaji was pointing uh, it is k nearest neighbors with means right um so why this is called k nearest neighbors with means i'll come back to it shortly but this is the function that we would use and it's a part of a library called surprise surprise stands for simple python library for recommendation systems right and uh, uh, this particular library also comes with a data uh, a sub a sub library called datasets uh, where some free datasets are 
uh, made available to you so you can quickly play around without having to worry about downloading the data somewhere etc so i'm including that and i'm also uh, doing train test split and all so basically i wanted to test how well my solution is performing so i will have some portion of the data for learning uh, what needs to be recommended and i will separate some portion of the data to test the performance of my recommender system that is built right uh, so that's the reason i would use this particular function called train test split okay and uh, we have seen um, the ml small data set right earlier right so i had it on my local uh, but now i'm going to use the inbuilt function inbuilt uh, data set called ml 100k uh, this is 100k records that are there in uh, uh, this particular data set and i'm loading that particular data set and calling it data right this is very similar to what we have seen it has movie ratings and the users that have rated the movie and uh, i am splitting the data into two parts one is uh, for training and another part is only for testing right so basically um, for all those people that are not familiar with basic machine learning uh, it is like i expose to you 85% of the i mean i, I you go through the year long process of learning and at the end of the year you have an exam where you will be asked certain questions and that questions are not something which you are know which you are aware of previously otherwise it becomes a leaked paper right so if i am your professor i train you over a period of time and uh, and and you will have a test at the end of uh, the um, the course where you are expected to answer the questions right so that 15% of the data is very similar to the 85% of the data that you are using for training over a period of time and on that 15% of data you are ex you are supposed to predict and i will be because i have labels i i already have a key sheet in terms of what the answers are i can compare your answers with the answers that are already there and then i can derive accuracy or whatever it is to express the performance of a particular recommended system i have built very similar to what happens in a classroom exam situation right so what i am saying here is this is all it is knn with means k equal to 50 that means uh, if sunil is an individual identify 50 such users uh, who are who have rated movies very similar way as sunil right and how do i identify the neighbors it is through pearson's baseline pearson's baseline is nothing but your um uh, your uh, pearson's correlation that i was just describing right and user based equal to true so remember i have told you that uh, there is another form of uh, collaboration filter called item item collaborative filtering so the same library surprise library and the same function can also be used for item item collaboration in in this particular exercise because we are focused on user based uh, we are uh, saying that um, um, you know, i mean we are uh, because we are now focusing on user user collaborative filtering we are saying that user based equal to true that means it is going to perform user user collaboration filtering right and that's it i have instantiated this variable with this particular parameters the moment i say algo.fit on the training data set it is going to look at the training data set identify the 50 neighbors and whatever movies they have watched highly rated and whatever movies i have not watched those will become my recommendations right and now here comes the training of the model is over and now what i am doing is i am creating a new user right this is not a use this is a user that existed in the database right the user id is 196 and there is also a another movie called 302 196 did not watch the movie called 302 yet right so i am taking 196 i am taking 302 movie if this particular user was to watch a movie called 302 what rating would he provide is the question that i am trying to answer right so what i do is i take the model that i have fitted here it is in algo and i say predict and i'm passing user 196 id 302 uh, the movie 302 to this particular function it is saying that if i were to uh, i mean the model is now predicting saying that if the user called 196 were to watch a movie called 302 then he would provide a rating of 4.15 to that particular movie so which means 
it is a high it, it, there is a high propensity that this user was uh, uh, if you were to provide this as a recommendation to the user then there is good chance that he is going to click on it how did it identify that he is going to give or how did he how did the algorithm predict that he is going to give a rating of 4.15 for the movie that he has never watched it is like this right the algorithm went ahead and identified 50 neighbors for the user called 196 right and out of this 50 people there are subset of people who have watched this movie called 302 they would have provided some ratings i have taken the mean rating of all the users that are my neighbors and that have rated that particular movie and that is 4.15 right say for example gautam some x y z all these four people have watched that movie and all these four people are my neighbors now i take each of the ratings that were provided by xyz and gautam average it and that is 4.15 that means these four users are very similar to me and because they have highly rated that movie that became um, uh, the average of all four of them has become the rating for me right so remember we had that uh, test data set that we have kept here 15% test data set and training data set has gone into this variable testing data set has gone into this variable now i just have to pass this particular variable into uh, the algorithm and say algo dot test the moment i do that it is going to predict what is the rating that i would provide uh, uh, for each of the movie in my test data set by each of the user right so the way you read it is a user called 880 for a movie called 394 he would rate it as 3.0 but the actual rating is 2.63 right we also also had 2.63 because <coughs> testing data set already was split by, from the original data set so the original data set is this right so we already have ratings right we have split certain portion of this particular uh, data set into uh, as test data set we already have it so therefore we will be able to compare it right so here it is all of them right so now one interesting aspect that i wanted to to i wanted to focus is actual k equal to 6 we have asked 50 neighbors to be found out however the algorithm only found out 6 people who are very similar to me similar to the user called 880 right you have given the liberty of identifying 808 uh, identifying 50 neighbors but looking at the pattern of uh, ratings that were provided by 880 user i was able to find out only six people who are who think very similar to uh, similar to the user called 880 right and based on that six people rating that was provided for the uh, I, uh, movie called 394 i was able to get this particular number called 3.0 okay and you also see was impossible equal to false right remember when user user similarity fails user user similarity fails when i am a new user right assume that i have pseudo created uh, one user called uh, 581 this user did not exist in my database right nothing is stopping me from adding that record to my data set but because i did not rate any of the movies and i am a new user there is no way that i can find out an, uh, my neighbors there when there is no possibility of identifying who neighbors are there is no way for me to predict what is the rating that i would provide to a movie that i've never watched and it's a flop right that is when the algorithm is going to spit out here saying that was impossible equal to false uh, was impossible equal to true right was impossible equal to true essentially means either the movie is super new nobody has rated it or the user itself its uh, user user himself is very new i am not able to predict the rating or i am not able to identify his neighbors so that's what it is saying uh, that's what it says when or uh, that's what it reads when i say was impossible equal to true all right and now that i have the actual labels and now that i have um the predicted labels i can compute something called as rmse i remember somebody is actually asked how do i actually compute the uh compute the performance measurement of uh, a recommended system in this case look here i have the actual ratings 
and I have the estimated. Uh, this is the actual rating. This is the estimated rating, right? Five minus 4.6 will give you the distance between what is predicted versus what is the actual, and that and you do a root mean squared error kind of formula that will give you the actual deviation from the uh, from the uh, actuals that are there. All right. So you have a RMSE of 0 0.931 here. Um, you know, based on your data set size, uh, you can decide whether this is good or bad. Okay. So that brings that brings me to a closure of how to implement it. Right. So you, I, I'm pretty sure you see that it's just few lines of code that I've produced, and uh, still it's able to do a wonderful job, uh, and of predicting the ratings. So in a nutshell, coding is not a big deal. <laughs> right. Uh, even if you are an average coder, if you are logical. And if you are a person that is curious, um, you know, as long as you understand the concepts, super duper job you can do, uh, not just in recommended systems, but the entire machine learning and deep learning areas, right? Um, so we are almost at the closure of the session. I have 10 minutes left. I'm open to taking questions. Uh, Gautam, open to you. Sure, Samir. Uh, so we have a few questions. Uh, so we have a, uh, we have a viewer who asked, how do you convert categorical data into numerical? Um, so there are a number of ways actually. Um, so one is called as dummy encoding, another one is called binarization. Uh, but I don't think it is actually fitting into the context of this session. So, uh, but it's it's a pretty straightforward process. Uh, you could label encode it. Um, say if there's a color called red, blue, green, I could code red as zero blue as one and uh, green as two, right? So that is label encoding. Another one is binarization. You could create three different columns uh, from red, blue, and green. Red will become one column, green will become another column, blue will become one other column. Depending on the uh, value that was in, uh, there in the initial data set, you code um, a value of one under whichever column that particular uh, record had true and the other columns will become zero. So that is binarization mm. or dummy encoding. Mm. Sure. Uh, we have a question from Ankit who asks, uh, can you please talk about alternate least square matrix factors? Uh, uh, yeah. Matrix factorization method. Um, so basically, um, I will give you a crux of it, not the complete mathematics behind it, because I don't want to confuse other people, Lankit. Uh, you definitely have to come to our classes to understand this better. I'm not trying to sell, but uh, it's an intense concept on its own. So it's like this, right? Um, a person called X liked American Pie, a road trip, Euro type, Euro trip. These are the movies he has rated as very high, right? Based on the movies that a person has rated very high, uh, if I am able to determine certain characteristics of the individual, and I don't know what these characteristics are, uh, these that's the reason we call them latent, right? I, I'll not be able to attach a definition uh, to these characteristics, but I'll be able to quantify what those characteristics are. As long as I'm able to determine what, what are the characteristics of a new user, and if there's a new movie, and uh, if there are some people who have rated that movie, as, as long as I'm able to identify what are the characteristics of the movie, a dot product of both of them will give me the rating that a person would give to a movie that he has never watched, right? So let me summarize again. Uh, I, I really went quickly, Ankit, I'm sorry, um, but the, the as long as you know what are the characteristics of an individual and what are the characteristics of a movie, right? The characteristics of an individual uh, in, in tandem with the characteristics of a movie will give me the rating that a particular person would give uh, to a movie that he has never watched. So this is the core concept of, uh, you know, matrix factorization or latent factor uh, method. Uh, we use an algorithm called singular value decomposition there. So when I say singular value decomposition, you take a matrix, you divide it into two sub, sub matrices and uh, the multiplication of these two sub matrices should give me the original matrix. So uh, what it will help me is uh, to divide a matrix into multiple matrices. The multiple matrices, one matrix represents the user characteristics. Uh, the 
other metrics represents the movie's characteristics. As long as I have this data, I'm good enough and I can go ahead and predict for all the users, all the movies, what ratings you'll be, they will be providing. Sure. Okay, so when we do, the, do this in class, we actually, um, you know, give the Excel sheet to our participants and uh, we will provide them the solver function, which they would use in order to determine how to get the latent features of the users and latent features of the uh, movies as such. Uh, it's a complex co concept on its own. It will take about two hours to deal just with SVD and uh, a matrix factorization method. So it's, it's, it's a very detailed algorithm as such. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, we have one interesting question. Uh, there is actually, uh, I would like to rephrase it this way. Uh, we also have uh, Google search, which these are giving you search recommendations, right? Yes. And we have an entire uh, industry is searching and optimization data on which is trying to beat the algorithm, right? Yeah. So now in the same process, right? For example, when someone is building a recommendation system, uh, how can someone Sort of circumvent the recommendation system. Like for example, Amazon is trying to do product recommendation, and if right. I am I am a seller in Amazon, how can I right. take of that? Uh, okay, so to be very frank, um, these recommender systems that they're building um, are uh, proprietary to each organization. It's their IP. Nobody reveals uh, what uh, techniques they are using and stuff. And if if I am looking at the recommendations of uh, Amazon, I am only deriving heuristics based on my experience or uh, based on the recommendations that came to me. Um, so nobody reveals how exactly they are doing it. So the search engine optimization kind of uh, example that you have given, um, the, um, the search engine optimization techniques have been changing quite often because the Googles and the Bings of the world are always constantly changing their uh, way in which recommendations are done. So unfortunately, we'll have to get the intuition of what they must be doing and then change it accordingly until, until unless you have a friend working in Amazon that can tell you how they're recommending the products, <laughs> which is, which becomes their internal thing altogether. It's, it's I'm pretty sure they've written a non-disclosure agreement about their IP. <laughs> Sure. So there's no way, no way to do that, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Ankita. Uh, she asks, uh, what if my data set does not have the rating as a direct feed? In that case, how do we derive it? All right. So uh, there is uh, something called as implicit data collection and explicit data collection, right? So sometimes what people uh, do is uh, they pop up a you know, screen when you're watching a movie and ask you to choose your preferences, right? Sometimes, um, you know, they even um, showcase certain um, certain movies to you and ask you to pick up the top 10 movies, etc. So this is an implicit way to collect uh, data from you, right? So you might not explicitly rated certain movies, but if you say that you like uh, DDLJ, obviously, uh, you know, the propensity or the rating that you would give is five on five for that particular movie. And or, or if a boy, a boy likes a Terminator, that means he likes thriller movies or, or, or some kind of X-Gen movies, right? So um, these, are, these are implicit decisions that they make. You might not have had uh, five on five as a column or a rating as a column, but if you say you like a movie, that is another way of saying, you know, I would give a five if I were to watch. So you may want to uh, implement certain code in order to convert your liking into ratings. Right. Oh, great. So uh, that brings me to one last question I would say, Sunil, which is sort of what would be some of the key takeaways from this session. Uh, so the question is, uh, okay, now that the, uh, the students, uh, the people have got a primer on recommendation system, what are the next steps? Can you suggest any way to make the next steps? Um, see, I, I, it's a very difficult question, Gautam, so, though it's the last question. So, uh, I, so I have absolutely no clue who are the participants that have joined, right? So uh, my recommendation is going to be popularity recommendation, right? So uh, everybody's learning Python, everybody's learning ML, everybody's looking at uh, data, data science and uh, AI. Uh, so, 
uh, recommender system is just one area. Mm, so there are other areas also like NLP, the core area that I come from. Um, there is also deep learning. There is also reinforcement learning. There is also uh, IoT. There is also descriptive statistics, uh, descriptive analytics. Um, all of these areas are very interesting. And uh, um, I would say, you know, these are areas that are super exciting for people to learn. Um, so in general, I would I would suggest my, my recommendation would be to go ahead and uh, uh, jump into it, learn as simple as that, right? So it's, it's completely all right. If you don't know Python, there are alternative ways you could develop your skills. Um, so ask experts on to how to develop uh, on certain skills, uh, learn the concepts, learn a little bit of mathematics, um, and, and 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 make the best of the situation. So data is the new oil. Everybody's speaking about it. There are exciting projects happening. So participate in it and make the best of it, right? So it's just not, don't restrict yourself just to recommender systems. So there's a lot more. Uh, in fact, there is a, another kind of recommender system called content-based recommender system. Unless you know a little bit of NLP there, you won't be able to perform anything. So the basic now becomes NLP. Right. In order to know NLP, you need to know text mining. So in order to know text mining, first of all, you need to know machine learning. Right. So it's it's a loop. Uh, so, uh, but it's a it's a super duper area to be in and uh, make the best out of uh, the situation and the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Gautam, that was a very exhaustive answer, but I hope that gave you pointers on the direction that I'm moving. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks, Anil. Thanks, Anil. And I would say my two cents on a funny note is. You can also explore our programs at Great Learning. We have programs in artificial intelligence, machine learning, and business analytics, where a lot of these concepts get covered. Oh yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, I would say I have learned much more than what I have learned in my PhD while teaching in Great Learning. So that really helped me to refresh my concepts and the kind of questions that I get made me think through and then learn better. Uh, Every, every time I teach a class, I come out as a better person. Uh, so th that's that's the crux of uh, what I get from doing these sessions. <laughs> Great. Uh, I think on that note, uh, Sunil, uh, I would uh, really thank you for your time taking out uh, during your trip to Copenhagen. I hope uh, you had a good weekend at Copenhagen. And I also thank all the participants for patiently going through this two-hour session. And I hope all of you have uh, had a a very good key takeaways on how recommendation systems work and uh, and start your journey on uh, becoming an AI or ML engineer. And on that note, I would like to uh, end this session. Thanks, Sunil, and thanks everyone uh, for joining this session. And have a good uh, thank, thank you, everyone. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you.